Hey, Blockchain Life, this is Kerry Oberbrunner. I have with me a very special guest today. In fact, we already have some mutual friends we were just chatting about. Ed Vincent, great to be with you today. Great to be here, Kerry. Thanks for having me. Oh, man. Listen, I love blockchain. I love NFTs. And I just peeked at your website. My mind is getting blown right now. <laughs> uh, Festival Pass. Let's jump right in because remember, my audience is authors, entrepreneurs, and influencers and i think there's a lot for them to learn about what is festival pass and how did you think about it sure so so uh festival pass is um it's a web 2 property today but a lot of it uh n n let me rephrase that it's web 2 but we're heavily leaning into web 3 with a lot of things and i'll talk talk to you about all that yeah. um but the, the way it came about was I've been an entrepreneur for over 20 years, and I was just sharing with you a little bit about some of the organizations I'm part of. Um, but uh, this is, I guess, my fifth company in 22 or 23 years, and each one has kind of built upon the next. So when I, when I first, uh, the first company I had was an e-commerce company that I sold in 2001. And then I had an experiential marketing agency, about 70 people, where we would bring a lot of big brands um, to live events, right? So whether it was a lot of alcohol brands or just any kind of consumer brand that wanted to integrate in an experiential way with uh, large events. We also helped launch a bunch of film festivals, which was a lot of fun. Um, Vail Film Festival. We worked with uh, the Son Sonoma Valley Film Festival. I owned a film festival down in the Dominican Republic. So there's a lot of just kind of understanding how live events work. Uh, and that was my passion. That's what I love doing. And then fast forward, you know, uh, I went into, uh, I built a SaaS business in, in retail and franchising, uh, and then we sold that in 2014. And then my, uh, I guess, fourth company was a data and analytics company in the um, uh, entertainment space. So okay. a, lot, a lot of big television companies, people might have heard of a and &E Networks, AMC Networks, Film Studios. They were all wow. clients where we kind of helped them um, understand their consumer data and build a infrastructure and platform to be able to you know, gather that data, enrich that yeah. data, activate that data. So th this is all getting to your question, right? So put put that all together, um, entertainment, live events, data, um, all relevant to it. And there was a time um, while I had the company that there, there was kind of an infamous company people may have heard of called MoviePass. Um, and, uh, and they sought us out because we were kind of the known people in the entertainment space to help with data. Um, <clears throat> so I ended up kind of not kind of, I ended up going in through my company as their de facto chief data officer for about 18 months to really kind of dig into three and a half million subscribers data and try to figure out like what, what that all meant. Um, so while I was there and throughout all of the different pieces that I've been building over the years, I realized that one, um, they had a great product market fit. People wanted to use their product, but they had a very bad business model. Um, yeah. And uh, and I was starting to really understand um, a couple of things, right? One is how do you build subscription and membership in the entertainment space? And how do you do it for IRL events, like in real life? Um, yeah. Obviously, IRL wasn't the term uh, before really the Web3 space came about. And, and tell my audience what IRL is, because anytime you use a term, you know, my people are still kind of new. I, I try to just break it down. Yeah. So IRL just means in real life. So when uh, a lot of people in Web3 talk about, you know, the overall concept of, you know, everything done on online or on the Internet, um, a lot of the things Web3 bridges to is things you can experience in real life, whether that's at an event, a membership at a club, um, just any kind of experience that Web3 kind of can bring you into. Um, and that was you know, when we, we started thinking about really what we wanted to build at Festival Pass, it was before I was truly thinking Web3, but our philosophy from day one was very Web3 centric. It was, okay. it was, it was all about um, how do you build a platform? And at the core, it's a subscription marketplace for live events, uh, the, the traditional Web2 business. So people pay a monthly subscription fee or an annual subscription fee. They get credits, and then they can use those credits to attend over 80,000 live events or 600,000 hotel rooms. So wow. in, that, in that process, right, is I wanted people to become members and be part of a community so that they get value. And some of that value is paying no transaction fees when they buy a ticket. Some of that value is being able to have community and engage with other people that have like, like-minded passions. Um, so that was a long-winded answer to your question of why Festival Pass and where to come from. 
and I see that your community, at least when I was just on the website, I see that are you using Discord as your main community portal? We are now. We just launched a Discord a couple months back. <clears throat> we have about just under 3,000 people there now. Um, expect that to grow to 20, 30, 40, 50,000 soon. Um, but uh, yeah, you can get right up there and pop that Discord. Yes. But uh, um, yeah, we, we started the Discord when we realized we're moving heavily into Web3. And you know, as you know, um, Discord and Twitter is where Web3 lives. Yes. Uh, and for us early on, we were really under the impression that it was all about Instagram. Um, so we have, you know, over 40,000 people on our Instagram and we were really engaging in that way. Um, so we're kind of newer into the discord and Twitter space, but, um, very excited to be able to do token gating and sorry for the terms, but I'm happy to yeah, share, yeah. What, share what that all means in a community. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you share what, uh, token gating is? Yeah, so all, all, those most people that don't know what Discord is, you know, it's really started where a lot of gaming communities would would engage in it. And it, at the end of the day, it's really just a chat room. It's a chat room where people can come into from a community. Um, but what you can do in it is you can only give certain access to the overall uh, Discord, which is, they call it a server, just really a space that is where your community lives. And then there's channels within that Discord, meaning that, you know, we have a channel for Austin, we have a channel for Europe, we have a channel, and we are, so when people want to join these channels, um, you can choose to have them um, show something in order to get into a channel. So right now, we don't have full token gating on anything because we're about to launch our NFT, but as soon as the NFT launches and people hold the NFT, they actually yeah. have it in their in their wallet, in digital their crypto wallet, wallet yeah. 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 digital wallet. Um, they'll have to show that wallet and connect so that they can get into a member only section of the Discord. So right now I can just connect via a Discord login, but eventually I'm going to connect with my wallet and the NFT will verify that I'm a holder and it will allow me access access to different channels. The community will always be there for everybody, but there'll be different channels. So when people get together and say, oh, you're, you're also an NFT holder, there's a really cool, and I'll yeah. explain some of our yeah. utility of the NFT, but there's a really cool event coming up, you know, this quarter only for NFT holders, and we can talk about it there and all that stuff. Do live events now seek you out or are they starting to seek you out or will they? Is that part of the plan? Yeah, all the above, right? So in the long, the big picture of our model, as, as you can imagine, we started this company kind of right in the beginning of COVID and we built out the infrastructure and the technology through COVID. So there's a little bit of a silver lining there. I didn't, I didn't need to go um, fire, you know, hundreds of people because of the fact that live events weren't happening. Right. So, so we just kept a small team and built through the pandemic. And then in the last, you know, nine months, um, all of the live events or m many of them started coming back. So now that's, that's, we built the infrastructure to get a lot of those events on our platform. Mm -hmm. um, and we get inventory from, from various sources. So uh, some of the sources you're referring to is, Hey, I'm a producer of an event and I would love your audience to know about it and be able to participate in it. So yes, um, we have some of that and we'll get more and more of that as, as we move forward. The other is um, partnering with um, not only producers of events, but um, venue owners themselves or um, you know, others that are players in the event space. Um, and then we also do get some of our inventory from the secondary sources so that we ensure we're getting a full selection. So if you become a subscriber, you want to know you're going to find something to go to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So talk to me about, I'm going to go to your uh, website right now, uh, the hotel concept. That's really interesting. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So not too dissimilar to events. Um we wanted to ensure that you'll, you'll find it on the regular part of the website. You're, you're on the, uh, the NFT piece now. Yeah. Okay. So I should go there and did it, did it switch? Um, oh, if you, yeah, if you click that main logo, it should go yeah. back to festivalpass.com. It's weird. Uh, uh, screen. What am I on? StreamYard makes mm -hmm. me shut it down and go back. And I got you. Now I'm there. Cool. So just uh, over to the right, just click hotels. So perfect. All right, let's hope it takes me there. Did it did it switch the screen? 
Yeah, it did. Okay. It did. Okay. So, so you'll see it, once it loads, yeah. you'll see it. But um, so what it, what it effectively is is um, you know as a member of Festival Pass, um, and when you have credits to spend, you can spend them on all these live events. But but we wanted to make sure you also had other opportunities to spend your credits. So um, what we did is we partnered with numerous kind of um, hotel wholesalers that as long, because we're a membership platform, we're able to get really great rates from hotels. And then um, as a benefit of being a member, we pass those quote unquote great rates on to the user, right? So um, somebody can come in and, you know, pretty much find a hotel almost anywhere in the world. Um, and then they can use their credits to book that hotel room. That's awesome. Wow. Okay. So I like this. And I'm in Columbus, Ohio, so maybe I would even just click that, and you know, sure enough, it's got it's got hotels. Wow. So let's talk about this. How, how, you know, for the skeptic who says, "Whoa, hold on, this is just like, what's so novel about this? What's so innovative about this?" I see it because I I know Web three, but give give the person who doesn't quite understand this what you're really doing here. I know you're, you're building community around yeah. a currency around, uh, digital assets. Um, but, but break it down for us. Yeah. So in the general web two business, which I think we talked a lot about, um, you, you can just think about it as a subscription marketplace where you get benefits for joining and paying a monthly or annual subscription. Right. So that's one thing. Um, <clears throat> the thing on the web three side, um, that we're launching and it's coming up in the next couple of weeks. Yep. I don't know. I don't know what the not found was there, but, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, um, but coming up in the, the next couple of weeks is the, the lifetime founder NFT. Wow. And that's, that, that's pretty cool. Um, because what it is, is that when you go to, uh, when you buy, when we're only uh, offering 10,000 of these NFTs and what you get for it is it's, it's about sharing some of the ownership with the community so they can actually buy the NFT and the immediate utility they get. And I don't know that word utility gets thrown around a lot. And again, I'm trying so. to help define, so. <laughs> help define I'm it for some, for some of your audience is uh, it's really just benefits. So um, the user gets a annual founder membership to the platform every year in perpetuity forever. So what wow. that means is they get about $1,200 worth of credits every year to spend on hotels or on events, wh whatever they want to go to. And every single year that, that bucket of $1,200 worth of credit refreshes as you own the NFT. So, Jeez. and then the idea with that is by having it exist in perpetuity, an owner of this NFT can use it for three years, have all this amazing experience and then say, yep. hey, I want to sell it now. And then go to OpenSea or the secondary market and sell it hopefully for much more than they pay for it. It's so good. Hey, man, I saw you. You got one of my groups here, Third Eye Blind. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Didn't know that was your... Uh... Well, I mean, that's that's how old I am. No, um, I, I'm, so... I'm bad because the other one said REO Speedwagon, and I started thinking of my, my high school days. Ah, there <laughs> you go. There you go. So this is legit, man. Like, Jaws for a moment. So you're telling me that with a festival pass... I could essentially get my ticket and what's the advantage of having festival pass rather than some other booking facility, booking site? Yeah. So as a member, um, there's a couple of things you get, right? So you get discovery and access to things, uh, you know, that, that exist. And over time, you know, I, I shared you with you the data side of what we're doing that's just going to get more and more refined in terms of the more data we have to be able to present you with really cool things. There you, you go. So you'll know what my favorites are. Yeah. And, and give you the option to tell us. Um, so we have, we have a feature that <clears throat> it's in beta, but uh, it will go live soon, but almost like an Instagram like concept where you can say, Hey, I live in, you know, whatever city yeah. if you lived in Austin and I like the Paramount theater and I want to see every event that comes through the Paramount theater. And that will just show up immediately in your feed. Um, wow. Just like, just like Instagram or, Hey, I like third eye blind. And anytime yeah. third eye blind is playing, I want to see where the events are. Um, you're, so, so, you, so you're like an aggregate of my preferences. Yeah. Uh, across the con entire um, yeah. event space. And what's cool about that is we have not just music, it's 
music, we have sports, we have Broadway theater, we have, you know, film. So all that kind of stuff um, is helpful. So that's one. The, 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 the big thing, and I use this analogy a lot, is um, you don't pay ticketing fees, right? So one of the yes. biggest the biggest thing in the, the industry for years. Uh, Ticketmaster. I, I don't want to call out any specific names, but yeah. there, there are some large ticketing companies out there that charge very large fees. Um, and what we're ensuring is is that we're all about transparency right so it's it's if you come on and you see a ticket that costs 100 credits when you check out it's 100 credits um there's no you know i I think the consumers have been very frustrated with that lack of transparency where i think i'm buying a hundred dollar ticket and then it's 160 when i check out um and i just it's something that a lot of the big companies just haven't solved because You know, there's there's many reasons why they do it that way, but yeah. it's been one of the biggest pain points across the board. So we don't have <clears throat> those ticketing fees, and the way we do it is we're willing to take a lower margin in our business because we're we rather give the fees back to the members um, because they're committing to be part of the community and be members and pay. Uh, recurring revenue. So I'd rather run a re- recurring revenue business with lower margins um, and have everybody get a piece of the pie rather That's than awesome. the flip side. Um, and then the other thing is um, just the, the we're going to continually put more and more benefits on the platform. So, you know, the idea that you can book hotels cheap when you're a member uh, cool. for less than you can get elsewhere, that's a benefit, you know, um, as we, especially in the Web3 side, as you have different kind of levels of NFTs, you can really get special access to things you wouldn't be able to get anywhere else. I love it. I love it. I bet you there's going to be a lot of people who do community elements like, hey, I'm going to this. Like in Discord, they'll be like, who's going? I'm going. Hey, yeah. let's have a meet up before. Hey, we're entrepreneurs. Let's do a mastermind. What do you think? I love that. Yeah. And um, we're going to try and help facilitate that, but we want the community to, to take the role. So as I said, we just launched the Discord recently and just launched kind of the Austin channel. And we're, we're going to test it here. And if it works, we're going to do it in every other city. So we're getting a couple of the community members to kind of take over the the localized channel and and do exactly that is wow. let's say there's let's say there's a thousand people in the Austin Discord channel and they're all saying, well, hey, you know, we're all going to the Austin FC soccer game tonight. Right. Let's all meet. Let's meet at this bar and, you know, hang out or, um, you know, let's uh, anybody else going to ACL. Let's all get together and hang out at this stage. So everything you talk about, it becomes this spot where people can kind of get together on these micro communities. And awesome. the one thing the one thing we'll do to help that is uh, and again, we're testing it here in Austin. We have uh, uh, we just finalize the design to wrap kind of a party bus here in Austin. So, uh, nice. so it's kind of like the community can say, Hey, let's all, you know, meet downtown, jump on the festival pass bus, drive to, you know, one of the pregame bars before the soccer game. And, you know, the first hour of happy hour will be on festival pass or something like that. Wow. Okay. That's pretty crazy. So a couple questions. I see people wanting to get in on this not only as a member, but also, I mean, hey, I got a conference called the Igniting Souls Conference. We've been going around for 12 years. Justin spoke last year. Oh, awesome. Friend. Awesome. Yeah, we got Dan Sullivan speaking this year. And, um, you know, Lee Richter. I don't know if you know Lee Richter in the, the, in name, the NFT yep. space. Yeah. Yep. So my question would be, what if we wanted our event to be in Festival Pass? Is there a strategy that you have for thought leaders yeah so so one of the things that we're focused on this year is bringing more and more conferences if you want to call them or okay. events like that um i don't know if you consider igniting souls a conference or a festival. yeah we do actually oh, yeah it's, it's pretty much a conference um and one of the things that uh i've personally been attending a bunch of the um kind of nft crypto conferences i was just in yeah. uh, nft myc for a week and nice. um but I want more and more of those on the platform, especially because um, a lot of people in our Web3 community that are going to be owning the NFTs and getting those $1,200 worth of credits in perpetuity every single year, they should be able to use them on a conference. They should be able to use them on, a, uh, on whatever they want to go to. So yeah. the answer is absolutely yes. And, you know, being from the growth mindset that I've been lucky enough to be a part of for the last yeah. 15 years and with my EO group. Um, like I just want more people to have in the community of life to be able to have 
access and places. I, I feel blessed and lucky that I've had these opportunities um, to be around like-minded people that all want to look forward to, um, you know, building a better life uh, in whatever capacity that means. And, you know, you absolutely should have a community around being able to do so. So the answer is yes to, to your question. Uh, so good. Okay. So where do you see this, this going? What's your, what's your big vision? Um, I mean, obviously there's a, there's a economical standpoint, but there's also a, to me, a, you know, a make the world a better place type of concept going on here as well. Um, what, what's your big vision? Yeah, I mean, it, it really comes in our, our classic um, mission statement, right? So, you know, it's, it's a very simple mission statement. It's inspire people to live active and engaging lives through passion, connected member experiences. Um, Ooh, that's good. And all that, all that really means to me, right, is that um, I've always loved, you know, whatever your passion is, whether it's entrepreneurship, whether it's music, whether it's sports, whether it's anything, right, is being around community where that passion is your connection. Um, and I think that's what Web3 really does so well. Um, but for us, it's, you know, we want to grow, obviously, our core business, which is live events and hospitality. Um, but I see that kind of growing to multiple other experiences, whether those, you know, experiences are being able to book, you know, a really amazing, life-changing trip, if you will, yeah. with, with a group of 20 people that you really want to you know, be participate in the community on. Um, there, there's, you know, a lot of it really is just finding your passions, connecting with community, and then having in real life experiences together. IRL. IRL. I love it. I love it. Well, it seems like you have a great group in Austin. I was there filming Justin a few years ago, but what isn't Ryan Levesque down there and just a whole bunch of, uh, what is it? Um, something about fathers. There's a there's a whole group down there that Justin's part of about fatherhood as well. That's pretty big, I think. I'll have to uh, tap him about that. I, I don't know as much about that specific group, but yeah. uh, I'm a father of three three young daughters, so I, I fully understand it. Yeah, yeah, it's a good group. There's a bunch of people down there that it just seems like Austin has a really, I don't know, like unique entrepreneurial give back, you know. Justin gave some uh, a lot of the money back to uh, human trafficking to prevent. Uh, but I love what you're doing. Um, I like how you're kind of saying, look, COVID during the downtime, hey, you leveraged it. You know, you didn't have this huge staff at that point that you had to lay off. But but now you're kind of like on the upswing. And so are live events. Agreed. Yeah. And, you know, part, part of what you're saying before, I absolutely agree. I think we're in a good place. Um, you know, it's only going to grow from here in terms of the way in real life experiences change. Right. So yeah. um, I think some of the big players that are traditionally known for in our space um, have to change. Right. Mm. You know, every, everybody always asks me the question, you know, speaking of blockchain life, but uh, just the NFTs and everything, they're like, well, when are all live events going to be NFTs? Like, why, when are the tickets are all going to be NFTs? And the answer is they will be. Um, yeah. The question is, is just when, because a lot of the major ticketing companies have a lot of tech debt and it's going to be three to five years before they truly move everything over to that world. Plus, as you, as you know, Web3 is all about decentralization, right? So, Unfortunately, some of the big players, it's all about control, right? It's all about yeah. centralization and control. So we just want to be part, even if it might take, you know, three to five years for us to, to be as, as big and yeah. have millions upon millions of subscribers. Um, we want to do it right. And we want the community to kind of come along on the journey. I, I love the vision. I would say that right now, I mean, I just saw Top Gun with the family. <laughs> and when I purchased those tickets, I would say that they were an NFT. Now, not literally where I where I could keep it, but I really think that there's a lot of events now that are starting to say, look, we're, you know, maybe not the big players, but even our conference, we're going to, we're going to issue everybody an NFT for attending yep. just to get them onboarded into, Hey, here's a digital wallet and here's how to trade and here's how to get crypto. So I love what you're doing. Last thing I'll ask, um, you know, kind of the big player who made it famous, VCon, sure. where ticket admission was an NFT. But what would you say to authors who say, 
because our whole model is take a book and turn it into 18 streams of income. Sure. And some of those streams of income are keynote speeches, conferences, workshops, seminars. I think you could just wrap those inside of an NFT. What do you, what would you say to the author who, who's thinking about that? Yeah. I mean, I, I think part of it, right. Just like any um, consumer business, um, if you're an author or a keynote publishing a book, right. It's, it's those, you know, first 10,000 customers or first thousand or 10,000 customers that are the passion people mm -hmm. that really support you everywhere you go. And the ones that want to go to multiple keynotes you're, you're doing at various places. So <clears throat> the idea that, you know, you can issue an NFT to a passionate group of people that love your content, that NFT can un unlock a lot of things. It could unlock um, exclusive content just in, in, the, in your community. Um, it could unlock access to the events like the VCon world that you're talking about. Um, and, and the beautiful thing is once somebody owns that NFT and has the ability to engage with their wallet, um, I think we need some more photos of our of our performance. Oh no, you're all, you're all good. I'm just uh, you're just popping around. Um, yeah, pop but uh, around. but uh, at the end of the day, um, you know, I think there's so many great things that once your community is connected by a wallet. Um, oh yeah, we have a we have a podcast that we do as well. Um, nice. So, so good. But but all, all the above, right, is that I think we're finally in this place where there's so many use cases for NFTs and NFTs is not about just, you know, a cool digital art. You know, that's right. the way I look at it. It's packaging. Right. So yes. if you have a product and then you package it in something cool and interesting. Great. But the product's what you're buying. That's um, true. And, and that's the same for us, right? It's, it has to be a, a utility that people get value for. And the mm -hmm. same thing for authors. If you're if you're issuing an NFT, it can't just be something pretty that somebody has in their wallet. It's got to do something. It's got to yeah. give them access to something. Love it. Well, Ed, this was fantastic. When I talk to Justin tomorrow, I'm going to mention that we chatted and absolutely. I can just tell you're doing great stuff. So thank you for coming to blockchain life and we'll, we'll get a bunch of people to go over, visit, maybe become members and who knows, maybe you'll even have some of our conferences there someday as well. Absolutely. And one thing to, to leave it with is uh, just from a timing of the NFT, if people are crypto curious, is <clears throat> so we're launching uh, our pre-sale just next week. And all that really means is kind of people within our community, close community that are maybe previous investors and yes. um, and stuff like that can go in and, and buy the NFT before others. Um, but then we have an allow list, which what, what that means is that people can... Uh, you know, get access to it before it launches. And the one thing that's interesting and just want to share it and it might be too much information, but you let me know is it's 10,000 total NFTs that are being sold. But the way we're selling them is we're selling them in 10 separate drops of a thousand a piece. Wow. And so when we go live in a couple of weeks, yeah. we're only going to sell a thousand of them total until they're sold out. And then we'll, then we'll launch the second drop of a thousand. And each time each tranche gets sold, the price will go up. Right. So anybody buying in the first tranche pays the least amount of money. That's and, it's, smart. and it's the same utility across the board. Right. So if you buy. So we're launching uh, the first drop at 0.95 Ethereum. Um, so that's just a, a dollar amount. If anybody here understands what that means. Yep, yep. Um, I think currently Ethereum is about fifteen hundred dollars. So, you know, it's about fourteen hundred dollars in order to buy the uh, the NFT. But that's a, a lifetime of events where $1,200 a year you get. So you can imagine within 1.2 years, you're getting all your money back in terms of mm -hmm. events. Um, but the reason to bring that up is, you know, by the time we launch the 10th tranche, it's going to be closer to three Ethereum. So, you know, effectively, this is not investment advice, but anybody buying in early could effectively double or triple their their value in the short period of time before we issue. That's all cool. I love how you did that. that that's super smart. There's even strategies around that. So I want to encourage the, the, the audience here. Even if you don't buy, watch what they're doing. You know, Ed knows what he's doing. He's been in fifth company, I think. And I love the synergy of how you wrapped all those previous experiences together. And that's exciting, man. So uh, super proud of you. Appreciate and, it. Thank you. And thanks for your mission. I, I love, would you would say it one more time about the passion 
connected experiences to inspire oh, okay. people to live uh, engaging lives through passion connected experiences. Clarity attracts, confusion repels. That's what I say. So good job, Ed. Uh, super clear and, and uh, super attractive. So thank you, my friend. I appreciate it, Kerry. Thanks for having All me. Right.